Dialysis is more than a medical procedure, it's a rhythm of life. For many patients, eating during treatment feels natural, but is it safe? For patients undergoing hemodialysis, the hours spent connected to a machine are a routine, but demanding, part of life. A common practice in many clinics worldwide is providing a meal or snack during this time. This is known as intradialytic nutrition. On the surface, it seems like a simple, compassionate solution to a long and often draining procedure. It offers comfort, passes the time, and addresses the hunger that naturally arises over a three to four hour session. The clinical rationale runs deeper than just comfort. Many individuals with end-stage kidney disease face a significant risk of protein energy wasting, a state of malnutrition that can lead to muscle loss, weakness, and poorer overall health outcomes. Providing a meal during treatment seems like a straightforward way to boost caloric and protein intake helping to counteract this dangerous decline and improve a patient's nutritional status. For years, this has been a widely accepted approach, with the benefits appearing to be self-evident. But in the world of evidence-based medicine, even long-standing practices must be scrutinized. Recent research has begun to raise important questions, challenging clinicians to look closer at the physiological effects of eating during a dialysis session. The core of the issue lies in hemodynamics, the way blood moves through the body. Dialysis itself places significant stress on the cardiovascular system. Does adding the digestive process into this delicate equation introduce unforeseen complications? A pivotal 2020 study from Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, published in Nutrients, sharpened this dilemma. The research, conducted by FOTH Thu et al., systematically examined this practice. Their goal was to move beyond assumption and gather concrete data. Does eating during dialysis truly support a patient's health by improving nutrition, or does it inadvertently introduce new risks, such as a dangerous drop in blood pressure, known as intradialytic hypotension? The findings revealed that the answers are not black and white. The study highlighted a critical trade-off, confirming that while nutrition is vital, the timing of that nutrition is equally important. It's a delicate balance between meeting fundamental nutritional needs and ensuring the safety and effectiveness of the dialysis treatment itself. This forces a re-evaluation of clinic protocols and underscores the need for personalized care plans based on each patient's unique risk profile. So, what does the evidence actually show when we look at the practice of eating during a dialysis session? The findings reveal a complex picture a genuine double-edged sword with significant benefits on one side and considerable risks on the other. To understand this balance, it's crucial to look at the data from clinical studies. A key systematic review published in the journal in 2020 by Afotia Thu et al. at Aristotle University synthesized the available evidence. This review helps us weigh the pros and cons based on collected data, moving beyond anecdotal observations. On the positive side, the evidence strongly suggests that eating during dialysis can significantly improve calorie and protein intake. This is vital, as many patients struggle with protein energy wasting, a form of malnutrition that leads to muscle loss and weakness. For some individuals, particularly those at high risk for malnutrition, this mid-treatment meal can be a critical intervention. It supports better nutritional status, which is linked to improved energy levels, greater strength, and a better overall quality of life. However, the evidence also highlights a major risk, intradialytic hypertension, or IDH. This is a sudden and significant drop in blood pressure during the treatment. The data shows a clear link between eating during dialysis and an increased frequency of these hypertensive episodes. These episodes aren't just numbers on a screen, they manifest as uncomfortable and distressing symptoms. Patients may experience sudden dizziness, lightheadedness, cramping, nausea, and profound fatigue, which can make the remainder of the treatment and the rest of the day very difficult. Beyond the immediate symptoms, IDH can compromise the effectiveness of the treatment itself. It may reduce dialysis adequacy, 
which is often measured by a value called KT5V. This metric tells us how effectively toxins and excess fluid were removed from the blood. Even small reductions in dialysis adequacy can matter, especially over the long term. Inadequate toxin removal can lead to a buildup of waste products in the body, contributing to other health complications down the line. The physiological mechanism behind this is well understood. When we eat, the body naturally diverts a large volume of blood to the digestive system, the splanchnik circulation, to aid in digestion and absorption. During dialysis, the body is already under hemodynamic stress as fluid is being removed from the bloodstream, shifting even more blood away from the central circulation and toward the gut can overwhelm the body's ability to compensate, causing blood pressure to fall. The result is a perfect storm. The patient experiences hypotension and the reduced blood flow through the dialyzer can lead to lower toxin clearance during that critical treatment window. This trade-off is at the very heart of the intradialytic eating debate. So, what does this mean for clinical practice? The evidence, including the 2020 nutrient study by Foti H. Thu et al., doesn't offer a simple yes or no, instead, it calls for a cautious, evidence-based, and highly personalized approach to intradialytic nutrition. The key takeaway is that one size does not fit all. The first and most critical step is risk stratification. Before even considering a meal during treatment, clinicians must thoroughly assess the patient's cardiovascular stability. This isn't about a single blood pressure reading. It's about looking at patterns over time. Does the patient have a history of intradialytic hypertension? Are their pre-dialysis pressures consistently low or labile? Answering these questions helps identify who is at a higher risk for complications. For patients deemed stable enough to eat, vigilant monitoring is non-negotiable. Blood pressure must be checked before the meal, monitored closely during consumption, and followed up afterward to catch any delayed hypotensive response. Beyond the numbers, it's crucial to track subjective symptoms in real time. Ask the patient about any feelings of dizziness, lightheadedness, nausea, or sudden fatigue. These are early warning signs of hemodynamic instability that a monitor alone might miss. For high-risk patients, or those who show intolerance, it's vital to consider alternatives. Providing a nutrient-dense meal or an oral nutritional supplement immediately before or after the dialysis session can offer the same nutritional benefits without the associated risks of intradialytic hypertension. This ensures malnourishment is addressed safely, reinforcing a patient-centered strategy. Nutrition matters, but so does safety. With evidence-based care, patients can thrive without compromising treatment. Talk to your care team. Know your risks. Nourish wisely.